Hi, I'm Wendy. Welcome to my West Coast garden. I garden in zone 8B in Vancouver, British Columbia on the west coast of Canada, which is in the Pacific Northwest in North America. Today, I'm gonna to share six tips for happy spring gardens. Tip number one, use a local planning chart as your guide. You'll find a lot of generic information in gardening books and online and on seat packets that's meant for other parts of Canada or North America. It doesn't apply here. In coastal gardening, if you plant peas as soon as the soil can be worked, the seeds will rot in the ground. Better to start the seedlings inside and then put them in the ground when they've already germinated because in the cold, wet soil that can be worked probably all year round, you're not gonna grow any peas in January or in February. The, se the soil needs to be dried out enough that um, and warmed up enough that the plants can grow healthy root systems and you can put them in the ground and try it out but my advice is to start the seedlings inside put them in when the when the planting chart tells you that you can and you'll end up with better results the other thing about the coastal region is even the planting charts are for a pretty wide generic region where there's a lot of microclimates so if you live at a higher elevation or closer to the ocean or in a flat area away from the mountains that gets less rain, you have to consider all of those factors. If you're following the planting chart, you'll need to watch the weather. And if it's raining too much or too little, or it's getting cold at night, you're gonna to need to cover things and make other adjustments. Personally, I use the West Coast Seeds Coastal Planting Guide as a guideline, and I'll put a link below. And then I adjust by covering things depending on the weather. Tip number two. Don't forget to water your plants that are under cover. When it's pouring with rain out, it's easy to forget that those plants under cover aren't getting wet. You probably only need to water once a week or so. You do want your plants to develop strong root systems and, and watering too frequently won't do that as effectively. Um, but probably once a week with an inch of water is plenty. Tip number three, take care of your biannuals. Don't plant biannuals like beets and carrots and chard and kale, onions, leeks, cabbage. Don't plant any of them too early. If there's a cold snap, biannuals may be tricked into, into thinking it's the end of the season and starting to prepare for it by bolting or going to flower in midsummer. Ideally, if biannuals are planted later in the season, they won't go to flower until the following year, which allows them to produce longer and in some cases over winter which is why on the coast you can get some carrots and beets in your garden in the spring. I've included a link below for a better technical explanation of this process which is called vernalization and um, a great resource from the Cowichan Valley who has some great information in a monthly newsletter she puts together. Tip number four, don't plant tomatoes before Mother's Day. You can get tricked by a warm week in April into thinking the soil's warm enough and that you can put things outside, but tomatoes and peppers hate the cold and they'll just shrivel up and die or worse yet, they won't produce good healthy flowers and healthy plants. So wait until mid-May when the soil temperatures are consistently in sort of the 20 degree range or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Tip number five. Control for cutworms and slugs. Cutworms will hide during the day in the soil and then they will come out at night and chow down on your seedlings. You can catch the climbing ones if you are diligent and go out with a flashlight and look on the undersides of, of leaves. Um, but the ones that burrow under the soil will eat the roots of your seedlings and you'll go out in the morning to find your seedlings have just all toppled over. If you disturb the soil around the seedlings, you can usually find the cutworms, but they kind of bury under the soil during the day. I've included a link below that gives you some more information from the Capital Regional District in Victoria um, to, help you, to help you deal with, with the cutworms. As the soil warms up, cutworms cocoon and then become moths in June when they fly away. The other real problem for spring gardens is slugs. Slugs love it when it's cold and wet and they will climb around and eat all of your lettuce and you'll just find a trail of slime behind them. I personally like to put copper tape on the sides of my raised bed, which I buy at Lee Valley. 
and I can put a link below for that. Um, the 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 scientific evidence on the copper tape is kind of weak so if you um, trust in science you would probably just go for using iron phosphate or slug bait which is poisonous to the slugs they eat it and then they don't eat your plants so if you go the iron phosphate route sprinkle the slug bait around around your tender plants and then make sure you replenish it after the rains because it gets washed away tip number six probably the most important tip of all experiment there will always be experts but most of us come to gardening because we love playing the dirt and are awed by the magic of seeds germinating and growing into something we get to eat if you are lucky enough to have access to a backyard or a balcony or a community garden experiment see what works for your budget and lifestyle and don't get too hung up on doing it perfectly there are a lot of seeds in a two dollar package enough to make a few mistakes and then try again thanks for joining me on my west coast garden we'll see you next time